Now that we have added our first single purchase, let's also add a subscription and a time pass. Now when talking about subscriptions, we usually want to add a subscription for a number of articles and not just for a single one. That's what single purchases are for. With this in mind, I've created other two placeholder articles which have the same content as our Economist Article 1, which should help me to illustrate how one can actually do this. So I'm going to be creating a one-month subscription, which is in the Economist Article 1, going to be added underneath here as a purchasing option. And for Economist Article 2 and 3, this is going to obfusc obfuscate the three paragraphs here and it's going to show an overlay saying that you can read this article if you buy a monthly subscription. The purpose behind this is kind of to have a monthly subscription for my, all my articles which relate to economy. To do this, I would have to go back to my connector dashboard and uh, you see that we have two other two options here on the left. One of them is time passes, which we're going to be adding towards the end of this video and the other one is subscriptions. So let's add a subscription. Now, unlike the title of a single purchase, which is more something for you, something for your internal use, the title of subscription is actually going to be displayed to the end user. This is why it would make sense to give it some kind of a meaningful name. Like, let's call it one month subscription, for example. Same things. Same thing applies to the description here. So I'm going to add um, something like subscribe to an economist for a month. Here we come to match type. Now match type in single purchases was only exact path or article ID. Now if you remember, exact path means that we are matching the exact path to an article. So we're matching one or more exact articles. And article ID allows us to match the article on its added article ID. We still haven't talked about article ID. This is going to be tackled in the next lectures. Now let's talk about path prefix match, which is an option that we will be using for creating a subscription. Path prefix match is useful when we want to define a number of articles that have a same prefix under which we want on, on which we want to apply the same subscription. Not really sure what that means? No worries. Let's just take a look at the URL of this article. Now, if you look at the URL, you can say that it is composed of three parts. The first part is the actual web address of the entire website. So this is this in our case. The second part is a prefix. And this prefix is, um, in my case, so that is for my website, this is a prefix for all Economist articles. Third one is the exact article identifier. So this is pointing exactly to the article that we're looking at here. So if I want to apply the subscription for all the Economist articles, I'm going to be needing this part here. Now I will just copy this part here and paste it in my path prefix match. This is a way of telling our backend, okay, everything that has this in its prefix is going to have this particular subscription. As simple as that. Let's define the validity period now. So let's say this is a one month subscription and the price of this subscription is going to be four euros or 400 cents. Note just one thing here, that subscription is the only purchasing option that has only pay now option. So both a single purchase and a time pass have a pay now and a pay later option. And here we finally come to the template. We have defined this template for the single purchase and we know it's going to work on Economist Article 1 because we already know how the source code looks like and we know that these classes are defined as hide me class. Now note just that hide me class, of course, the name of the class is just arbitrary. It can be just anything. 
Um, what we do not know is what the structure of these two articles are. So if we we need to somehow inspect the source code in order to see whether their classes are structured in the same way. How can we do this? Well, we can always, if you have access to your server, you can always go to your server and find the file and just inspect it there. Or second thing that you can do is actually to use a really handy tool offered out of the box by Chrome, which is developer tools. So if you just click on options here, if you go to more tools, and if you click on developer tools, a console will open to your right. And you can use this console to identify, you can use it for many purposes, but we're going to use it to identify how are these elements structured here. If you're not sure what to look in the HTML here or how to, how to view this, there's an element selector which allows you to inspect it quite fast. So if you just hover over your first paragraph and you actually click on it, you will see which paragraph it is and you will see that the class name is in fact hide me so this class is called hide which plays just well with how we have defined our single purchase and the template associated with it which was uh, to hide this hide me class here so that's good economist article 2 is good what about economist article 3 we can just define the same process here so we click here more tools developer tools let's inspect the elements Let's go to um, our inspector here, and we see that the class is also hide me. So we're good there. That should work. Now we have saved our subscription here. We see it has appeared. It's uh, defined. Now if we go to Economist Article 1, and if we reload this page, there it is. One month subscription. It works well. And it's, if you remember well, we have defined it for... Um, this whole prefix match here so this should work for economist article 2 and 3 so if we reload here hmm it doesn't work why doesn't it work if you remember when we were defining the single purchases we had the same problem it was it's one of the items on our checklist and that is that we need to insert the connector script between the head tags here and as you can see here there is only one style sheet which is included um, and there is actually no um, connector script. There is no later pay connector script in here. So basically, this website does not know or cannot accept commands from our backend. If we go to our Economist Article 3, you will see that it has exactly the same problem. So if we inspect ahead, you will see that the connector script is simply not defined there. Now, this is not too complicated. What The, the only thing we need to do is to change the source code of this website itself. And you have seen in the single purchase video how this can be done. This is just one line, the connector script line that needs to be inserted between the head tags. So if we do this, if we insert the script tag in the head, like I've just done now and pushed it to my server, and if I just reload this website, there it is. There is the overlay. I'm just going to remove this thing here and this thing here and verify whether this has happened on Article 3.2. And yes, you can see now that one month subscription has been added to Economist Article 3 and 2. So this is what we wanted to have at the beginning. One single option, one subscription, uh, and only a single subscription on 2 and 3. Now just to close off this lecture, what I would like to add is time passes. Adding time passes is quite similar to adding subscriptions. Um, it's just one option here above subscriptions. If you click on plus you will see that the options, uh, the parameters needed are quite similar. So instead of repeating the same process I'm just gonna add a little twist here to make it a bit more interesting. Let's add time passes only for uh, article 1 and for article 2. What does this mean? This means that the user will be able to access article 1 either by buying um, only article 1 in a single purchase um, or by buying a time pass for say 4 hours and if a user buys this time pass then 
they will be able to access this article, so article 1 and article 2, for 4 hours. Or a user can buy a 1-month subscription to all Economist articles and then the user will be able to access 1, 2 and 3 for 1 month. So let's add this. Let's see how this is done. If we click on time passes, you will see that um, it looks very similar to subscriptions, as mentioned before. Let's specify a title that a user that will be verbose to the user, that the user will know what's going on here. So let's say a four hours access to article one and two. Okay. And let's put as description four hours access to our article one and two. That should be fine. And now you are tempted probably to go to the path prefix match. However, remember, if we would use path prefix match, then economist article 3 would also be available for, um, for the time pass. But we don't want this. We actually want to have access only to economist article 2 and economist article 1. So we need to use the exact path. The exact path, as mentioned in the single purchase, is used to specify the exact article which we want to sell. So we're going to use firstly the exact path of economist article 1, like this. And then we're going to add the second path to economist article 2 as well. Now what does this mean? This means that if you purchase a time pass on either 1 or 2, this is going to unlock both of them. So beware, it's not that there will be a time pass individually set up for both of them and you just get access to one of them. Whenever you're setting up a time pass in this way, that there are two paths together, it means that this time pass is going to unlock these two paths or more paths, depending on how you configure it. Now let's add a validity period of four hours. Let's add a price of, say, three euros of a pay later for example and let's associate it with this template because now we know that the structure is the same let's click on save if we click on save we'll see that this has been added and if we go back to our article one and if we reload there there it is four hours access to article one and two has been added for three euros and if we take a look at article two we're expecting to see a one month subscription and a four hour access to article one and two. And as designed, if we click on Economist article three, we're going to see that this one has maintained only the one month subscription. There's one more thing I would like to point out here, and that is that you see the difference between this overlay, which says um, read now, pay later in English, and this one, which says it in German. Why is this the case? If we just inspect briefly our elements here, we will see that there are two different libraries which are added to this, uh, to this page. So this one is the connector library which says up de de, which means that this is the one that has German language by default. And if we would go to the um, Economist article 3, and if we go into developer tools, and if you open it up, you will see that this one has ENUS, which is basically loading everything by default in English. All of this text can be additionally configured and customized via in-page configurations, and we're going to talk about this in some of the later videos. What I would like to showcase to you now is how purchase looks like. So if we click on, say, a time pass, which configures both um, sorry, which enables the user to see both Economist Article 1 and 2. And if we just go through the Buy Now, Pay Later, you will see that the content will now be shown to the customer. And in fact, if we go to Economist Article 2, which is now Paywall, then if we just refresh it and reload the page, you will see that this is now available to us as well. So that works. If we purchase one of the time passes, we get content on both of them just like we want to um, just like we wanted to configure when talking about configuring single purchases time passes subscriptions and so on there's not much more to it here this is the basic tools that you need to configure it 
In the next videos, we're going to tackle more complex cases and we're going to tackle other ways of deploying the connector. Because as said at the beginning, there are many ways in which you can deploy a later pay connector on your website to monetize content.